stream here. Hello, welcome everyone to our live stream. Mr. Nefidov, how are you? We have a challenge from one of our subscribers, but we are taking all challenges regardless of subscription status here on Twitch. International Master William Pascal, we're playing casual fast Friday, which means five plus five plus three, five plus three challenges. Hello. What's up, everybody? Panda was watching the stream yesterday. This is what I heard. He was actually watching the stream from Budapest for the first time. I was told from a very reliable source, the original, our beloved Panda. Panda is there just watching with us yesterday quietly. <clears throat> so Nefedov is, is here challenging us. Five plus three. We're going to take all the challenges we can get for the next two and a half hours. I'm streaming from 12 noon till 2.30 Eastern Time here in the United States at the moment. I am not in Budapest. I am in the U Eastern USA. So, Nefidov, without further ado, I don't know, my computer is sort of doing something. There's no other applications running, but I've got that blue circle, which makes me nervous. Um, when it does that, it probably has some, probably has some sort of tasks running that I don't I don't like that makes my computer laggy when I don't want to restart it now that I started the stream though let's just hope everything goes well Nefidov challenging me to five plus three the blue circle of death I've heard of the blue screen of death but this is the blue circle of death yeah this is not a good sign I've got a 423 ping which means that the task manager should be consulted it should be consulted as to what is going on with my computer. Ping is dropping. But it means another application or some kind of secret process is running. Sometimes Firefox does weird stuff. Like not closing old tabs completely and things like that. Our ping is dropping. You can see it dropping down to 217, 215, 205. I'm just waiting to the lag kind of evaporates before I start playing but I don't like that blue circle um, okay we've got more challenges here down to 179 uh oh it's jumping again that's weird I, I want to blame Firefox let's see if we can play though all right Nefidov it's fast Friday this wasn't such a fast start but I'm ready to go now okay so e4 what do we do e4 e5 Sorry for the delay, but I just want to make sure I don't have to restart my whole system. Okay, Pavel's tough. We'll try to defend against his anti-Petrov Caruana variation. The Afromeyev defense. <clears throat> I'm actually not even sure which way I'm supposed to capture here. D5 is... Uh, I don't think d5 is going to cut it. Um, knight takes e4, bishop e2, g6, castles, bishop g7, rook e1, castles. Might be able to get away with that. Queen takes e4, check. Bishop e2. Where do I put my bishop then? Queen takes e4, check. Bishop e2, d5. Castles, bishop d6. The queen ends up sort of mis mysteriously placed. Okay, I admit I don't really know what I'm doing here. But neither does white. I think at this point now, I'm trying to remember, was there some weird move like queen d8? All right, let's try the g6. Try to get away with this. <clears throat> this used to be what the engine would do if you if you gave it no opening book. What amazes me about Nefidov is the player who has constant time pressure problems. He doesn't use any time in the opening stage at all. C3 is really kind of lame for white. He's trying to nullify my bishop on G7, but... Alright, we're out of the woods now. I've been saying that phrase a lot lately. It's all fun and games. I love... What's up, 
what's up, Padye? Good to have a new, a new regular here. Um, it's all fun and games till someone loses an eye. That's another classic playground euphemism. Dim, good to see you. Laying on BD2, so maximum quietness here by White. The Ancient Gamer. But this annoying, like, moving instantaneously um, makes life difficult. Like, he's sort of trying to exploit the fact that I... <clears throat> You know, I want to play for a win, but he's basically trying to bore me to death here. No, no attempt by Nefidov for perfection in the opening. He's just being practical, making his first 10 moves in 12 seconds. Obviously not a threatening setup by White, but he just wants to avoid being in time pressure, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of like my simuls where people don't use their time. It, it irritates me because I want the other player to use their time so we can work together to create a really well-played game. But most people just try to be practical like this, and it's not as satisfying. All right. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm just randomly choosing a move. M randomly choosing a move. Randomly choosing a move. Um, here he has queen b3. I think I'm going to have to move my queen again at some point in the in the near future. The question would be where. Wonder if this is a mistake. It probably is a mistake to play this move queen d8. It's a bit too passive. Yeah, I mean, White's playing absurd, absurdly solid chess. Queen b3 is the best possible move for White there. Kind of exploiting my last move. I guess queen d8 was just a mistake. So now we have a problem. I guess I'll just have to play b6. There doesn't seem to be any way around it. I can't believe you're rooting for Nefidov here. This insipid variation he plays. I mean, it's nothing personal, but man, Queen E2 against the Petrov. I would quit chess if I played that. That's really... And look what those guys got. I mean, Kramnik and So both lost against Caruana when they played that against him. It's so... Man. Gotta get a real line against the Petrov. This is basically an exchange French for the pieces on strange squares. I messed up. I messed up with queen d8. I mean, clearly that wasn't a good move. I could have put the queen on a more active square, like d6, maybe. Or maybe I didn't have to move my queen at all. I could have just made a defensive move instead. Okay, so what's happening here? Bishop takes is, like, safer. After Pontic, I didn't really like knight e5, I guess. This is a passive move. Nefidov is just way too focused on time. I mean, it seems like he's only concerned about the time. Just moving instantaneously. He hasn't spent more than 5 seconds on a single move. I think maybe on queen b3, he actually thought for like 10 seconds. Um, I think that people are people like this are... I like him, but by trying to help him to be a better player, I think... People like this are not trying to win on time. They're just, you know, afraid to be in time pressure. But it's too much, you know. You don't have to be that afraid to be in time pressure. I'm sort of stabilizing. My position is stabilized now. I'm I'm not clearly worse like I was a minute ago. Acerbeat, thanks for the donation. Clash Kid, good to see you. 
I would also have such a position in the Petra with white. Yeah, I mean, he got a little advantage after queen b3. I messed up, but truthfully, um, I find the whole thing to be rather insipid for white. He's literally playing the most solid style you could possibly, possibly play here. <sighs> knight d3, knight d3, knight a5. Um... I mean, I don't mean to diss him completely, but I just try to encourage people. You know, the London system, the Queen 2 Petrov. Okay, the London system can be played aggressively. Actually. I was expecting 93. I thought it was a better move there. He had immediate pressure on D5. This is not a bad move. Basically, he's playing without any risk, which is not easy to do, truthfully. There's some skill involved in what Nefida was doing. He's He's playing for some kind of very small edge without taking any risks. And I respect that, but I don't I don't stylistically like that. I don't want to play like that when I'm when I'm in his shoes. I want to be more dynamic. So, all right. Enough is enough. Banking on this to uh to keep him away from my d5 pawn. Eventually he'll drift into time pressure. Thanks again to uh, Astrobate and also Dim for donating and supporting the stream. Dim is up to 1,000 for the week. Astrobate is over 1,000 with 1,115. Clash Kid, of course, our chip leader. <laughs> and at... Maybe I should play c6 here, huh? My knight needs a good retreat square back to b7. It's equal now, I think, truthfully. About equal. Totally symmetrical. I mean, that's what White's, you know, playing playing for. A very safe line. What's he up to? I'm not quite sure. I like that. Maybe h5. Is h5 too risky? I don't know what he's intending here. I mean, is he going to go g4 or is h5 just to try to play knight to g4? I have to be careful. Wow. Now what? He's threatening b5? That's nasty. Well, I guess he can't play b5. He loses a pawn at the moment. So he created some weakness. Knight, knight c4, take, take, b5. I could have sacked the exchange there. Be really a little bit over the top. If it creates a weakness on c4. Seems really solid, doesn't he? I mean, b4 is a little bit of a risky move strategically, though. Because I can, I can fire back. Now he's, he's literally playing on both sides here. Wow. Can't make up his mind. Time pressure setting in for both sides. Really, B4 then G4. He's just going on, going on the, uh, man, dynamic. Look at this. Screw this. I am not allowing, you know, knight h6 check or whatever you can have your you can have your um your bishop pair <laughs> comes the vacuum cleaner no oh a quiet move queen d2 that might be a little slow Oh, that was why he played it, to play rookie one. All right, I wasn't sure what queen d2 was about if he was trying to play like bishop h6. But now, um, pawn structure went by the wayside, it seems like. 
Black's a little bit better in terms of structure. He, he saw that quickly, defending his pawn. Nice job. No, 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 no. I want all your pawns to be on dark squares. All my pawns are on, on the good color. The good color. Let's play a bishop endgame. Uh-oh. Oh, he traded into this bishop endgame. And that's kind of risky for white. How about a pawn sack? A little premature. E3. Not a good moment to offer a draw, really, with H4. It reminds me of a game I won against my friend <laughs> Yuyano in a Hungarian tournament a couple years ago. He like lost in the in the final moment, offering a draw. And in an equal position, or right after it was an equal position. All right, man, really tough game, Neff it up. Wow, that was that was epic. He lost at the time control of 40 moves. Um, but I was thinking, like, at the end, if I could have sacked the pawn here, the previous move, Neff it up should, like, play bishop e3, maybe. But if I could have sacked the pawn with e3, I was really seriously wondering about this. Rufus and Doofus raiding with a party of 10. Party of 10 for Rufus and Doofus. So I was thinking about, wait, black to move here, like playing e3. Can I sack a pawn? It's not enough. Okay. This is enough for a draw, but I was trying to set it up. Okay, guys, Rufus and Doofus, awesome. Thank you for raiding. More people, more viewers, more friends. What's up, guys? So we're streaming for, you know, 2 hours, 15 minutes. More. We're going to be um, just playing 5 plus 3 against everybody. I'm not favoring anybody. I just ask that you have 100 games or so. I don't want to play, like, totally anonymous accounts. Padje, look. Oh, Padje is from Bosnia. I was assuming that was, like, a Dutch name. Um, it sounds Dutch. They always put the, the E at the end. Or the, but anyways, um, Padje, if you, could, if you could challenge me, we need the challenge to be 5 plus 3. So I'll let you come back um, and, and re-challenge me when you get back on. We're going to take someone on sound. Nefidov kind of drifted there. He was he was doing great throughout most of the game. He was better, I mean, in many points. Okay, someone on sound. I'm not going to play d5. So my second game with black. I'll just play my... Uh, you play the Mora again, but that gets kind of old. Let's play the Karo Khan. Nefidov did a good job but not quite beating me. Someone on sound is seriously playing this. <laughs> the squirrel. That was another opening that Jack Young <clears throat> talked about. Well, you know what? Let's try something original here. Got to create new problems for these. Create new problems for these guys with their silly little variations. Something original. Could transpose to an Aliukin's defense. So now is it knight d5 or d5? Just for fun. <clears throat> Original position. This is not Weird Wednesday. It's Fast Friday, but I don't mind making up some new stuff on the fly. I like to, I like to have fun and experiment in the openings. Um, I guess knight d5 would transpose directly to a version of the Aliakin's defense. To me, I mean, it takes F look complicated. I don't know about that. He's preventing knight g4. And he might have a pawn sacrifice here for real with like knight d7, e6. Pawn takes pawn. Is that realistic? I kind of doubt it. I mean, I could play knight e4, but I'm going to go here. I don't think e6 is a good sacrifice. But maybe my position is too passive. Like it's a good it's a good French for white, essentially. I think this is probably a semi semi fail. Blocked in my own bishop on c eight. <clears throat> oh, 
those though. Rufus and Tufus again, thanks for the raid. And thanks you guys for just being here and playing. We're going to be uh, here till 2.30 Eastern Time. It's basically like a really weird, weird French slash Cairo Khan. I don't know what to do, guys. I don't do knight f8 in the Cairo Khan. This is like knight b8. Um... Now, e6 is just a bad French, so I was trying to get away with something here. We're going to put the knight on this crappy square. Okay, that's a normal Aliakin's defense, though. It, it almost looks like it was a regular Aliakin's, doesn't it? I went knight d5, knight b6, and then later played d5. Weird. Okay, so which is the best place to go with the b? Bishop f5 or bishop g4? Bishop g4, focusing on... Focusing on the d4 pawn, I guess, and indirectly pressurizing his center. <clears throat> Bishop f5 also definitely a move there. Got to make decisions, decisions, decisions. If I play Bishop h5, does e6 become a real sacrifice? I'm afraid the answer is is out, you know, to lunch there. I'm afraid of e6 now. I think I have to take here and play e6 because I think that might be for reals. You know, he does it there, and my bishop's on h5. That looks kind of scary. I don't want any part in that today. Um, it's a little better for white. So our second opening in a row um, where white, I think, got the better of it. You'll never be a mate with a 9 and f8. Right. Deuces never loses. You understand that one, Clash Kid? But b3, all right, what's that about? He's trying to play to keep my knight off of c4. I don't think that's his intention. I feel like he's just trying something tricky here. But we don't have a very dynamic position. Um, okay, Clash Kid said, wasn't there a game recently between two GMs with Knights against King and they played on forever until referee stopped them? Clash Kid, yesterday my friend, Grandmaster Adrian Michalchison, actually posted this on Facebook. He said that it was Ria Zantsev, and he played on and on and on, and, and, and Grandmaster Mikhail Chishin wasn't the opponent. He just, like, saw it happen or f heard about it. And Ria Zantsev, well, basically, Mikhail Chishin thought it was ridiculous, you know? And I think that a lot of players like myself would agree with, with Grandmaster Mikhail Chishin. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's unsportsmanlike, and I think it's silly. I mean, you you can't you're not going to beat a credible player with with two knights, and that's just absurd. You know, I I don't know, I don't know what the guy was thinking. It's just childish and and sort of stupid. Yeah, that's true. All right, so castles. I mean, maybe if your opponent, your grandmaster, your opponent was like an eighteen hundred. I mean, I don't know. You know, there be is is there any cases where this actually won? I mean, I'd like to know, you know, <laughs> if the guy has a legitimate, you know, evidence that it's it's actually been won or he's seen other people win that position, maybe I would, I would, I would say, okay, then he's justified. But it seems like a really weird thing. Yeah. Yeah, I just noticed that on Facebook yesterday. All right, Knight D2. Um, I'm looking for tactics on his pawn chain, but I don't see anything. But knight d2 leaves him a little vulnerable on the dark square. Bishop a3. Threatening bishop b2 doesn't do anything. Bishop a3, he just goes knight f3, guarding the pawn. So what do I do here? f6 doesn't really work. I think that's an anti-positional break, attacking the head of the pawn chain. So at the end of the day, I just have less space than my opponent. I'm kind of suffering a little bit here. Yeah, Ria Zantsev is the guy who lost in he lost another twenty moves with White in a, in um the Karo Khan Panav attack, the draw variation. But another interesting thing that I've noticed about Ria Zantsev, although I know nothing about him, is that he plays he must be like one of the most active grandmasters in modern chess. When I look and I look on the opening explorer, 
this guy literally has more games than any other grandmaster i've seen like you almost every single opening almost every single day there's some game that this guy must play like 200 games a year i mean it's crazy he literally has more games than anyone i've ever seen all right um i'm struggling with the clock again struggling with the clock clock struggles how about my bad night on b6 does anybody have an idea about that that's really really sad i'm having no ability i'm having no ability to put pressure on his center with a knight on b6 knight on b6 is always bad He's got some weak squares, but I don't really know what I'm going to do about it. Two GMs played in a tournament once the other. Don't you know this is a draw? I know, but I don't believe it. <laughs> that reminds me of um, all the stories about Miguel Nydorf, who, who was like famous for basically talking to everybody while he was playing. He would, that, he would like ask like almost every random spectator for their evaluation of his game and stuff like really really childish and and almost like inappropriate questions um man i'm gonna get myself in trouble here let's go fishing time for a little fishing expedition Multiple places I've seen these stories about Nidorf, who just just wanted reinforcement. Okay, here I think I'm happy to trade pieces. Because white's space advantage is really irritating. Please don't attack the knight with a5. <laughs> it's on such a good square where it is. Um... I just I have to keep it on B6. Man, we're getting really long games, guys. The second. Morales, who I haven't seen in a while, uh, one of our regulars here, um, said to me some weeks or months ago that I like closed positions. It's, it's kind of like a... I'm a closet closed position lover. I keep thinking that I love open positions more, but every single time I play, it seems like I end up in closed positions almost every game, so... Yeah, it's weird. Um, Alright. It's like a Slav. Total Slav structure. But white space advantage on the king side didn't really get... It didn't really get far, you know, advanced here. His two bishops and his space advantage on the king side... Um, Look like they're not as relevant. Well, this is a reasonable move. Um, man, be careful. Said, said the international master. Coming out of the closet. Well, I mean, obviously, man, you missed bishop d3, dude. I mean, I'm just sitting there, and, and it's like a really bad tell, too. I'm, I just get, get real quiet when I just realized I made a terrible blunder. <laughs> it's like a total poker tell. Um, man, that was that was tragic. Now, White has a pretty good game here. Space advantage, nice. Rook c2 was a horrible move. Absolutely not the best. This knight on b6 is ridiculous. You could try stuff like knight g5. But I have g6, of course. It's a real interesting battle between my queen side and king side threats.
Merle Dixon gifted a tier one to Terry. Wow. Otherwise known as Morwa. I don't think that, you know, as much as he's been here, that Terry has ever been, uh, Morwa has actually been a, you know, he's not been a, trying to spit the word out, um, a subscriber. All right, speaking of Morwa, this guy's all playing with Morwa speed here. The knight on b6 is just illin. Finally. Bishop c4 doesn't work there. Okay, Whew, that was close. Classic Slav maneuver. Bishop c4, bishop c4, but do it. Now we try to play, uh-oh, this tactic works. Oh man, what is going on here? Stop finding good moves. Oh, I'm on d4, I almost forgot. Well, that was a nice turn of events. I managed to win a pawn. Man, another really, really similar game to the first one where I was not quite as bad off as against Nefidov, but Slightly worse, hanging on and winning an increment time pressure. <laughs> uh, that's what I do. It's like a routine. Thank you, Mr. Merle, for another gift sub, man. You're like Santa Claus. I love it. So Morwa becomes a subscriber. But you guys don't need your sub status today to be first. I'm going to take all the challenges as I get them. Um, probably don't want to have more than 10 more ch 10 challengers. I don't think I'm going to be able to play more than these many games. Um, maybe not even get to all these games, depending. So I don't think that anybody else should challenge me right now. Okay, Vichy the player. We're going to take this next. Abdel, I'm not going to accept the challenge because it's a rated challenge, Abdel. You need to challenge me to casual. Everybody else to challenge to casual. All right, Vichy the player. So Viswanathan, Viswanathan. Gigi Hillis said, I'll, I'll resub when he returns to Europe. <laughs> yeah, man, good luck with that. I don't know when that's going to happen. My mom's in the hospital for the third time. Uh, it's, it's just becoming, like, really problematic. I don't know when I'm going to get to return to Europe at this point. I'm looking at, like, maybe April. Vichy the player. Okay, guys, let's just play some chess here. I like the Star Trek Discovery series, although I guess a lot of people don't. Um, speaking of Star Trek, I thought it was alright, you know. Not like the greatest Star Trek ever, but it was, wasn't was bad. That's just my personal opinion. E4, E6, watchable, I would call it. Alright, so E4, E6, we're playing the French with white. So what are we going to do against this French? Um, the winner is pain. I've been playing, I played the white side of the Tarash a lot too. It's like, science fiction is, is kind of like music, you know, you, you either love it or you, or you hate it. Um, people are very opinionated about things like science fiction, <laughs> so. I'm kind of pro science fiction, but you know, a lot of people are like Star Trek fans. That's weird. All right, Bishop E7. So that's a move that's never really played against Knight C3. It's typically played against Knight D2, but I doubt it's really bad for Black. I mean, I guess I can play Queen G4 here. Queen G4, Knight F6, Queen takes G7, Rook G8, Queen H6. That's weird. That that looks playable for black as well. So, I don't really know um, any particular way to take advantage of bishop e7. Queen g4 is the obvious attempt, but again, knight f6, queen g7, rook g8. Off the top of my head looks okay for black. So, I don't think I've ever had to play against this. I guess we'll just make the routine move knight f3. 
I feel lame about I feel very lame about playing Knight F3. That, that doesn't seem right. Um Knight F6 now, and then what do you do? E5. So you have some weird Nimzovich. We're playing like some Nimzovich system where black has to move bishop e7 in. A variation that's essentially not necessarily that great for white. I mean, after knight f6, e5, knight d7. Um, more questions than answers. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I seem to struggle with queen g4. <laughs> I don't know the theory well enough. This is a totally alien position for me. All right, so now, I, I don't know. This looks to me like I understand what's going on a little better. I can play bishop b5 here. And this reminds me of a of a famous game where... This could transpose, obviously, to the... What's it called? Nimzovich. Speaking of Nimzovich, Nimzovich. For both colors now. But there's a famous game where Portish actually played white. Um, no, sorry. Portish played black against Spassky and got crushed. It was like when he was young... And maybe it was a student tournament, or I don't know, man. But he got absolutely ripped limb from limb. Lyos Portish playing, like, the Nimzovich defense. <laughs> I don't understand what he was doing, but, you know, Spassky just ripped him into little pieces. Bishop to b5, classic idea. So, JCS says he's seen bishop b7 before. Yeah, I mean, again, like, it's totally standard against the Short's system. I don't know if they call it that, but Nigel Short, famous for propagating this move against knight to d2. Different here, though. Um, okay, so now... We could transpose. No. I don't know, I can't remember how the Spassky-Portish game went, but... Somehow Spassky had, like, his bishop on g5, but if I, if I play bishop g5, I'm just losing a pawn. Um, this is kind of weird. Knight e5, bishop d7, we can take on d7. He takes, and then we play... Something like pawn takes pawn. That's very unambitious. I don't know. All right. Let's keep the tension somehow. So GCS says Romanitian variation. What? What's the Romanitian? This is credited to Romanitian? Anonymous, you're scaring me. You're scaring me, man. Let's just be friends, okay? Queen e2. This way I keep the ability to castle either side. What's up, everyone? Morwa, only stupid names. Artur, Airborne Warrior. The only one I don't know is Airborne Warrior. If you guys have 100 games, it's good to go. I'm willing to play. I just don't like playing like... And Padya actually re-challenged. We can take Padya. Because I asked him to re-challenge. -re we'll take him next. Because he was actually first. Alright, so now at this point, Bishop G5 doesn't seem particularly good. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Bishop G5 just just promotes exchanges of pieces that I think would help black. So I don't have a good square for my bishop, the c1 bishop. And he's starting to take on d4 now, so we have a bit of a problem here. I mean, strategically, I, I don't know, you know. Bishop g5, I mean, I could play it. But then pawn takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes d4. Pawn takes e4, bishop takes c6. B takes c6, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e7, it seems. It seems like a move. It just doesn't seem right to me. I'm sort of trying to copy Spassky against... <laughs> copying Spassky against Portish, though. He got the bishops to g5 and, and b5 like this. And somehow he got two knights against two bishops in a, in a fixed structure, which was awful for black. So looking at d takes e, bishop takes c6, and then something like that, with knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e7, queen e7, queen e4. Yeah, this position is not, not as good as I had hoped. Um, so I'll have to play something slightly different there. 
We have to do bishop d e bishop c six b c six bishop f six e takes f three bishop takes e seven queen e seven. That variation seems to be okay for white. So we'll have to do it that way. D e four bishop c six b c bishop f six bishop f six queen e four. We could get um, something with the two knights against the two bishops indeed at the end of the day which I think is favorable depending on the structure. But this is totally not the same. Not the same game. I don't know what Portish did bishop d7 at some point, or... I don't think that Portish... I think he may have played like bishop d7 instead of castles, if that's even possible in a same type position. Acerbate understands me. Chess is war. Guys, welcome to the stream. Thanks for the support from Clash Kid, Acerbate, and Dim this week. Those guys tapping the donations. You can also donate via Streamlabs to have the scrolling donation on the screen, like Move Eleven and Acerbate and the other guys, Fish Rat Cow. Um, who else was up there on the Streamlabs? Um, Black's running out of time now. He needs to move it. Now it's time to move. Okay, you can play with with your increment though. You better be good at increment, because I'm used to it. He played instead knight takes e4. That move is a pain. Okay, so we could possibly transpose. This move order I didn't really count on. I have to be careful not to lose a piece. Bishop e7, e takes f3. Bishop takes d8. I might end up losing a pawn there. So I like this capture. Does that lose a piece? This is getting weird. He takes f3, bishop takes e7. I don't think this is good for me. Tell me I lost a piece. This was the very this wasn't the variation I was supposed to get. Oh man, I messed this up. He took on there? What? We both messed this up. This is terrible. <laughs> totally misplayed by both sides. I guess I should take the pawn. Pawn is a pawn. <clears throat> This was a tactical disaster. I think from the perspective of both sides, could have played much better. Oh man, now I still don't know what to do. Seems pretty good. That's another pawn? Not exactly. Kind of dangerous. So I, I mean, I gave him. I mean, I basically thought, oh, okay, you know, he's just 1900, he's not that dangerous. But he's finding like instantaneously strong moves, almost really, really like instantaneously. He's 1900. It's like I'm going to lose on time.
Was this a blunder? It's just unclear what's going on here. And this guy comes up with some amazing moves. Given the time, the time situation. He missed A3 there. It's an excellent move. This guy is really strong. Surprised he's only nineteen hundred. Seems like literally stronger. Another epic game. He's actually playing for a mate now. Found a defense using no time. He didn't do that. He plays for more. Wow. What a game. Wow, man. That's amazing play by Black. It's a relatively new account. Right? 500 games. Like a master. That's insane, dude. This technique with no time was awesome. Another insanely long game. Wow. Wow. I'm not gonna. All right, I'm not gonna stick around for this. This is just gonna take too long. Let's go back to the next next opponent. So I said I would play with uh, with Padia. We stumbled in on Grandmaster Serawan. That was Serawan. I, I was wondering. He was pretty good. Um, all right. So D4. Yeah, I'm trying to play the modern defense sometimes. The chat went bonkers. Bishop f4. Ah. Oh. I just hate the London system. I just detest it. <laughs> it's just so boring. All right. Very popular. Many books out there at the moment. What do we want to do against it, though, objectively? Yeah, try to play something fluid. That was Grandmaster Sarawan, my last opponent. He was he was solid to draw there. Alright, Bishop G five. <clears throat> well, where do I want to put my knight now? Um 
kind of a tough call, isn't it? The traditional square. I don't. I, I could play bishop f6. That's not a great move. All right, so we're held to a draw. Unfortunately, but it was an all-around good game by our opponent. Remind me not to play a rated match with him. Um, this is a new opponent. He's used no time. It's not a. It's a common theme here today. Um, our, actually, our last opponent did use time in the beginning stage. What are we supposed to do now? So, no relation to our good old friend. <laughs> Wait, where was um, where was our old friend, um, Forza? Forza from? Was he from Bosnia or was he from Serbia? I can never remember. I think that was maybe Serbia. Okay, Bishop H4 castles. Knight A3, very solid stuff. Solid. This annoying Knight D5 idea. So just in case, we'll go here. I like how white, like, very subtly doesn't castle. He plays the thoughtful Knight A3. Um adapting with the London system to a Tory attack type of setup is not something that, you know, average players would be able to do very well. But this move, I mean, it's not like a big deal, but I thought that's that's pretty unique, and, and most people robotically play knight on bd2. But he gives himself, like, tricks with knight to b5 here. So, thoughtful. My queen can't remain where it's at forever. There's another idea for white. Okay, so what do we do? Queen b3. Just no castling. He will not castle. What's up with that? What do you have against castling? Anti-castling type of guy. All right, I'm getting out of the pin here. That's why I played a6 to stop knight two to b5, so we might as well execute. All right. Well, if he tries to play queen c4, I mean, that's just kind of weird. I don't think, I think we can just go c6 there. There's just peace pressure. Never played this guy before. Um, Padia, were you in the stream yesterday? He's solid, though. He's 5,000 games in bullet. Mostly bullet. So it's a player who's going to play fast. He's used to playing 1-0, probably. What is with the the not castling though? I don't really get it. Like especially after rook c one. I mean now you can't castle, can't castle queen side. So I mean, rook c one seems especially strange. I mean I understand rook c one may or may not be useful in some way, but I really thought he was delaying castling to leave himself the possibility of castling queen side. I think once you play rook c one. Then it becomes apparent that we, yeah, we have to castle king side. There's no more secrets, in other words, about where you're going with your king here. Um, so we got a kind of standard double fee in Keto. I feel like I'm playing Kamsky or something. Alright. Just to make sure my bishop's protected case of any kind of knight c4 knight a5 nonsense i guess king safety isn't much of an issue for a bit no well okay no no but i just tried to understand his point you know understand the psychology of what your opponent's doing until that yeah it was up in the air you get people who try to castle queenside in the in the closed queen pawn openings most of the time it's it's off the wall um there was that time that Karyakin got crushed by Michael Adams. <laughs> like He was playing the London system. He just got annihilated when he tried to castle Queenside a couple years ago. It's kind of a coffee house style of play. White is, um, is very good at waiting and doing nothing. Mature player in that sense. 
very, very good at this. But I'm good at waiting and doing nothing too. It's rare I encounter an opponent, you know, who's 2,000, let's say not 2,200 plus, who's capable of playing like that. That's kind of an art form, you know, doing nothing well. I mean, I'm doing a little bit of something. Getting off the diagonal, H3. Every game is some kind of closed game, man. Wow, really hard to play blitz in closed positions. Why is my queen there? So what do you want to do? I could have gone to h7. I mean, maybe that's a better square. All the pieces are hiding behind my pawn shell. He has three pawns outside of his pawn. His exoskeleton. Wow, f4. Okay, this is just uh, losing a pawn. I hope. Just simply a miscalculation. Oh, it loses a piece. Unless my queen is trapped. In which case, it doesn't lose a piece. <laughs> it gains one. Is it safe to take the knight? Do I have a way out? All right, he's going to resign. He was doing nothing well. Then he tried to do this. Yeah, four was inappropriate. Obviously. Unfortunate for white. Okay, Morwa is up next. Then only stupid names are to us. Airborne Warriors, new. AJ Prof, I think we might have played once. And he has a draw, actually. 1,200. Baleful. So all you guys, most of you guys I know very well. So King safety isn't much of an issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is now. Uh, unfortunate blunder by White there. Okay, Morwa is really, really tough. He was, he was given a subscription from Merle Dixon. This is Terry Lilas. Okay, Mister. Mister. Let's play C4. Guys, don't forget Saturday's my day off for the most part, as far as streaming goes. But, um, no, no, I don't do G4. But um, I'm going to be doing the simul. I do a simul every week on Sundays. So our weekly simul, 4.30 Eastern Time, here on Lee Chess and Twitch. Okay, what do we have? Um, just few 47 viewers. Where is everybody? Where is everybody? Come on. 47 viewers will, will not accept that. I will accept no less than 75. Where are you? All right. I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on strike until we have 75 viewers. That's it. I'm not going to move anymore. I will not move again until we have 75 viewers. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. All right. Let's play. Come on. I'm serious. I'm serious now. What's he going to do? D4. Do you play Bishop E4? Do you play the Nimzo Indian or Queen's Gambit Decline, Morwa? Queen's, Gu Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit. Let's try the exchange variation. It's a little early on this move, though. Maybe we do it next move. I never play the exchange variation. Um, oh, you forgot it was G4 double exclamation point. You treat all your opponents with disdain. I think it's the opposite should be the case. I know that you're being facetious acerbate but yeah seriously you should always treat your opponents with the utmost respect i mean strength wise maybe they're not good people and you don't like them or something but as far as like respecting their their play it's it's rarely to your advantage to to underestimate your opponent um all right anyway i said i was going to play the exchange variation but i hate the exchange variation let's just play chess here let's see what he knows Mainline Queen's Gambit Decline Orthodox. It's very hard to get an advantage these days in mainline openings, or any openings for that matter, because opening theory has so much information now available. Really, if you pinpoint a weakness with Morwa, um, Terry is, I would say, really only his openings leave something to be desired. In the middle game, you know, he's pretty good. His endgame isn't bad, 
but he, it seems like he doesn't have that much theoretical knowledge. Um, for a young player, that's more unusual, but not necessarily a bad thing. Because I think people focus, generally people focus too much on, on opening theory, not em enough on the other parts of the game. So to see a younger player like him, um, who I know, you know, he's younger, um, and not to focus as much on the openings is probably a great thing. Because I think that's something you can learn openings at any point. Better to, to build the rest of your game first. So he does know what he's doing here, though. C5 is uh, is the main line. Now, maybe we had a game like this before. I don't remember. Some people have tried the castle queenside here. I think that's, like, crazy dangerous. Um, probably we don't want to do that. White is rarity in the corner. What's this? E takes D? I guess this is normal. I don't know why I'm thinking so long here. Um, where, where, where are we? Where are rarity? I'm missing something. All right, um, what is this? Yeah, I guess this is just one of the lines, and white doesn't have too much. A little tiny itty bitty advantage. Almost zero. Played e5 quickly. That certainly wouldn't be my first idea with black. Does this not invite us, you know, into the heart of his position at d6? Can he, can he live with that? I think e6 is a little bit weakening. They're talking about Little Pony. That's not, is that Rarity? Is that the name? Oh. That's weird, okay. I didn't know the name of it. <laughs> it's like, all right. It's not Pinkie Pie, obviously. And he's making this work somehow. It's a brony stream, absolutely. I specialize in, in being a brony. It's my, my greatest, greatest ability. It's a joke, I'm joking about myself. We can, if we can't make fun of ourselves, I mean, I think we're just small. You're just a small person if you can't make fun of yourself. Um, anyways. Alright, what are we doing here? Bishop F5 on the way. So, I'll go here. Pray he doesn't have some sort of tactic. I mean, he was inviting me into that square. There is also the F7 business, but I'm having doubts about my entire existence here. He just this is all working out for black man he missed bishop e6 i thought that was a great move why did you not play bishop e6 there that looked like tremendous now i can play queen b3 which is kind of weird you know but white's a tiny tiny bit better even with the double pawns and now i can kind of feel like okay i'm safe probably this was a, a chicken chicken move. I mean, I could have just castled and, and awaited developments. But, okay, whatever. There's no danger, at least, here. Black's equal, though. Well, I mean, that's what you get when you play the mainline Queen's Gambit declined. There's no way to get an advantage, so... Equality is an accomplishment. Okay, so the e5 pawn, we can we can work on that somehow. My colleague, Mark Esserman. Bob, why are you trying to, in, you know, induce, like, of course he refused to comment. He's like, 
credible person. I mean, dude, that's just rude. <laughs> Try to induce that. And I would do the same thing, man. I wouldn't say, oh, I think I'm better than... That's totally appropriate. Let's try to induce like confrontation between two competing players. Always trying to stir up trouble, Bob. I don't know what your motivation is, man. Rook d2, rook d1. Trying to bring the pressure. Wait, did I miss something? No. But now we have something against f7. So we're able to keep this... Uh-oh. Does that defend? Serially? He has rook d7. What a find with, like, no time used. My gosh. How's he getting away with this? This is, like, robbery. This is robbery. How can I never have anything here tactically? Unbelievable. Wow. He's totally a genius. All right, so nobody's threatening anything. Is that the point? You went on to offer him a, a monetary reward for making insulting comments on stream. <laughs> That's interesting, man. Obviously, he thought you were a spy. Do I have knight takes b7? No. Do I have knight takes f7? No. Do I have any sort of tactics? Tactics never work, right? b4. We might have b4, but he has rook d8. Now he's threatening that for real? Man, are you serious? I just made this move like randomly the last possible second. He has two minutes more than me. And I have no advantage. It's like a machine. Just can't stop it. No advantage for white. You might as well just offer a draw here. And be glad you got one. Okay, I mean, you're just two minutes faster than me. With no chance for white to have anything. That's sick. He's got two minutes more than me. I just offer a draw. I mean, he declined. But I think it's, it's equal. Despite my doubled pawns. I wasn't really worried about Mark Esterman disparaging me, Bob. I don't know what gave you that concern. There are other people who I would probably worry about. But I don't think that Mark would be one of them. I always try to encourage him when he was younger. Um, and we've always had a pretty normal sort of interaction. Um... But this is just a draw now. Virtually perfect game by Black. Z Z Nation. Zombie Nation here with Merle Dixon. Alright, so this is just a draw. Boring. I heard from a draw earlier, but he wouldn't take it. This is just... Um... Probably want to play f4 at some point now. e4. Now, I don't know if that's a good idea. It's interesting though. Sack a pawn with e4. Triplex clan. So I don't have to take it. Taking it is probably okay. As long as I don't trade bishops. 
I don't really think that losing a pawn wins for black here. <laughs> um, objectively, you know, it might be a mistake to trade bishops. This is such a strong game by Black. He might be slightly worse, though, I mean, in some variations. All of his pawns are on the wrong color. Notable here. Now it's my turn to decline the draw. Did I have the exchange there? It's not enough, he has too much space with this king. I think this is just, just a straight up draw. But I mean, when he played the move bishop e6, did I miss the king and pawn win? Wow. No. I mean, yeah, g4. Honestly, I couldn't calculate this. Wow. I was winning. Of course, because I'm queening on h8. So I missed the win there. That was ridiculous. Okay. I forgot that I'm quitting on h8. Nice job, me. All right. So momentary mistake by black. What should have been a drawn game? Um, all right. Only stupid names left. We're taking next. So d4. We keep playing g6. Yeah, I mean, I had five seconds left, and it was it's not that simple when you have five seconds left. He has, he has like, his own pawns there. I forgot I was queening with check. Yeah, it's simple, Bob. Of course. You know that. You're an expert in king of pawn games. You would have seen it instantly. <laughs> it's like... I don't know. I wasn't sure. Didn't have time to calculate. Um, he had two minutes more than me. Two minutes and five seconds to five seconds at that point. We're playing the... Let's see. We're playing the... Uh, the Gingy Indian. Impressive game by Black, though. You know, given the fact that he gave me two-minute time odds and he made me kind of grovel for a draw. I thought that was pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, it's not that easy. I thought, well, if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. <laughs> maybe we'll just be able to win without having to calculate. I thought maybe I could win without it, but at the end, he just keeps threatening that perpetual um, bishop f4 outside the pawn chain. Okay, here, this is interesting. This is a rare move. I don't remember ever facing that. It kind of makes some sense to get the bishop outside the pawn chain and then play e3, maybe. The vast majority of players play either the pawn sacrifice e4 or h4, h5. I had a similar game with uh, Nils last week. Or maybe it was this week. I can't remember now. So we've got a few wins and a few draws today. It's uh, It's been really long strategic games. Every single game. I swear I'm not trying to do that. But I'm not getting open games to make an effort to play more open games. So, 
What's up? Any other controversy you've been stirring up? <laughs> queen a5, queen b3. Laszlo Epper, Yeshi, international master. Played a similar idea against me. That's probably a good square for the queen. Much more active than its counterpart, c2. There's clearly queen b5 trading the queen ideas for white. All right. So we've got 15 minutes left, and that means we've got time for, let's say, 10, 12 minutes a game. Don't anybody else challenge me. I'm not going to be able to play more than six or seven more games, probably. Knight to d2. The way, At the rate we're going, it's going to take forever. So knight to d2. Okay, still not... This is a retreating move, by the way. Nils did something similar like that. Um, he's still not capable of playing queen b5 check. You know, without dropping the d-pawn. Extremely similar to my game with Nils, except his bishop was blocked in, right? On c1. I like this this winnower French type of thing with queen a5 and bishop, bishop d7 and controlling the a4 square. Only stupid names left. Mystery player. Only 1,600, but only only one point out of 23. And yet, like many of these games, he had he had a pretty good game. I mean, he seems to kind of crumble at the last possible minute in a lot of cases. This is already a very credible game thus far by White. I mean, obviously not a beginner. Um, fairly advanced player. So what do we do? Castle's queenside, king d8. King d8 is a little weird to put the king on c7 with the bishop on f4. I mean, that would be a typical maneuver I might execute, but it just seems strange to do that with the bishop specifically on f4. So, what's next? Well, I mean, it's not easy to lose in like 10 moves. Bob, you're, you're 1600, right? So you're an expert in, in thinking what 1600s think. Um, but I mean, it's pretty hard to lose. You know, he hasn't lost any pieces. He's played logically, though. I mean, knight d2, bishop b2, bishop f4 outside the pawn chain. What is way threatening? Basically nothing. That's the one downside of his position. He's not really threatening anything. So we can start to threaten things like g5. Let's do it this way. I'll threaten something. If you're not going to threaten something, I'm going to threaten something. So g5, I might, I might regret playing rook g8. Yeah, this h4... I mean, that move, it's very reactionary, but it also is kind of logical. So, what do we want to do with our king? Queen a6 is an interesting move. Maybe we can win on time. This feels like a cheapo. It basically is. But it does protect b7. So it's not entirely a cheapo. I mean, I can maybe move knight, e knight a4. It affords me some maneuvers I didn't have. It puts direct pressure on c4. I've actually used the, the break b5 ironically, in these kind of positions against Epper Yeshi himself in the aforementioned game. Um, I think I eventually played b5 or something, but it's weird. Not sure where to put my king. Man, too many closed games, guys. What's up, Ludwig AC? Thanks, everyone, for subscribing. We need 75 viewers every stream, so let's get it moving. Get it moving up upward. Now a three. Yeah, that's when you you know you, the stranger offers you candy and you're like, well, should I take it or not? Is it poisoned? At Halloween time. I don't understand what a three does. I'm lost on it. I mean. We'll take the candy. Hmm, candy. All right. 
So we, we got our cheapo, but it's also a very useful cheapo because it not only wins a pawn, it hits the bishop on f4 with tempo. Although that may not be a prize, actually. That candy was delicious. Now can I have another? We have a very good structure. Our king is just chilling. I could put it on f7. We could just leave it where it is. We can play cat and queen side. Bishop g5 now. So white's hanging tough, as they say. Okay, this square. The proverbial knight e6. It's a really bizarre position. You love our pawn structure, though. It's one island. I love the one island structure. Everybody's here. Attendants, we need to have a roll call <laughs> for all the pawns. Is everybody here? Okay. Make sure everybody's in the house. What are we going to do next? Bishop f3. I don't like that in bishop on g5. That's starting to bug me. You know, this is being rather offensive. Might have to eliminate that at some point. Actually, maybe bishop c6 was a good move. He also has e4 trying to open up the game. Clearly, that's an option. We know about that. I'm going to try to trap his bishop with h6. Now he goes bishop f4. Bishop c6. Overprotect. Bring the knight back to d7, to the center, the centrum. Hungarian for center. Is that German to centrum? Like the vitamin. <coughs> Clearly angling for, for e4 now, white. There will be no e4. At least not yet. My queen is sort of strangely placed here. I think I should have... I mean, if I play queen a4, he can just move away and avoid the queen, the queen trade, which he should, actually. Do I need the centrum silver already? <laughs> All right. Such a patient dude. Step away, please. And don't play a4 while you're at it. Please, step away from the chalupa. He traded queens. This is a mortal sin. Do not trade queens when you're down a pawn with a bad structure. That is a very bad decision. Oh, now it's just, like, over. Basically over. No, no counterplay. Bad structure. The queens not being on the board is, is a really big disaster for, for white. I think the bishops are locked in. It's the ultimate. It's the ultimate. Uh, man, it's like the ultimate Gingy Indian now. Seriously. That's a good move, though. Came up with that. I am not trading that off. There's no way I'm playing. Bishop takes d1, dude. <laughs> That's not happening. Um, systematic counterplay. Look at those bishops. Oh, no. playing rook b1, he's attacking me. There you attack me. How dare you attack me? How can white even be alive now? Oh, d. It's hard to find rook g8. 
That was a hard move. I, I don't know why that was so difficult to see that. Model game. Amazing how much counterplay he has here. Just keeps coming, like the Energizer Bunny. Another defense. That's amazing, he just keeps coming up with defenses. But eventually something's gotta give. Man, he just did a good job. I mean, this is the 10th, the like, 7-hour game I had in the last 2 hours. I mean, how do I keep getting these positions where it's just really grinding? Um, so in German, it's Zen Centrum. Okay, so, anybody. <laughs> We're not going to be able to play 10 games, guys. Stop challenging me. I'm going to drop the last couple because I'm not getting to all those games. Matt, Mazatine, I'm not playing Raided can eliminate that so all right guys we have like an hour left in my stream which means i'm gonna be able to play like five or six more games the most so don't hope to challenge me if you're not already challenging me all right next is arctor as take back said there was a combination i didn't see with rook takes f2 not surprising those strategic positions kind of put you to sleep tactically and i think that's my big problem here why do I keep getting such absolutely like closed games? Let's try playing e4. Of course, when I did play e4, I got the French before. Now we're getting knight c6. Let's try to play something more open because I can't take this. All right, cool. Um, I can't take the closed games anymore. Yeah, this is, this is I think, technically supposed to be better than knight to g6 in this position. Really rare position. I like f4, though. It's a little more lively than, than other moves. Like, knight f3 is recommended in some sources, by some sources. The Gingy Indian strikes again. No, this is the Nimzovich defense this time. Some kind of uh, classic bishop, bishop b4 check. It's theory. Yeah, this is actually not silly. Bishop b4 check, and then what do I do? So knight f3, knight f6, e5. Then d5, I'm a little freaked out by that. I mean, knight f3 seems like a no-brainer. Queen d5. Queen d5 <laughs> is a little too primitive for me. Um, I'm not believing in that. I don't believe in, in fantasies. d6 played quickly. Wow. All right, Arturas, I'm I'm getting too far behind on the clock here. I'm gonna castle. Then you play some sort of crazy, crazy thing. You can go crazy with the fishing pole type of defense. Um, so maybe I shouldn't castle. I, don't know, I still feel like it's sound. Let's just do it. I gotta just play blitz. E knight f6 right away. That's kind of scary. Help yourself. He doesn't want the pawn. I can't imagine why. Okay, so e5. Now we're gonna have problems with our with our e4 pawn, so that needs to be protected. This is creeping me out. It seems like he's familiar with what he's doing and I'm not. This doesn't seem right, but I need to secure the pawn on e4. It seems very strange 
to undevelop my bishop from c4. But again, I don't have a better suggestion, really. If knight g4, knight c4... He's very little time here. We've played how many times? Wow. He actually has an even score against me. Is that Simul or, or Litz? Is he has an even score against me? No, he's he actually he actually lost in the Simul game and then scored one and a half out of two against me in Blitz. That's disturbing. All right, you're supposed to win the Simul game and then lose in Blitz. Thanks, guys, for being here with me. Um, we are going to be back on Sunday with our Simul. So d5. This is a very principled move, I believe. He stopped c4. I mean, knight c4. Excuse me. So he's going fishing. He's going fishing. If knight g4, knight b3, bishop b6, and then the question is what next? He can also do um, really brutal primitive type moves like knight to g5. But I don't see how that works per se. So what's the best move here? Um, queen e1 is also interesting. But maybe we save that for next. Try to play queen e1, queen g3, transfer some power to the king's side. I don't know. f6, wow. Play using no time. That is disturbing. All right. I just hope that this is okay for me. Five plus three casual blitz against all challengers here. Nothing to think about. Okay, f5 is possible. G6 is possible. I mean, I just thought this is dangerous for black. What do you guys think? Where are our viewers? Come on, guys. Let's get the numbers up to 175. We're going to be back on Sunday with a simul. Okay, G6 is a really combative move. H3, knight E3, I guess? Can I bring more pieces to bear? There are some ideas with knight to g5 on f takes e knight to g5 as an intermezzo. Um, but here, I think I have to hit the knight with h3. Don't really have another suggestion. Not sure what's happening here. Man, that is an insane move to find with no time. Wow. So now knight to g5. I mean, it's surprising this guy's only 2,000. I mean, seriously. He just played the toughest combination to find, like, instantaneously with f takes e. He didn't even think about it. I mean, every other move is, is probably okay for white, but he just instantly saw this, like, delayed peace sacrifice. Wow, that's not easy, dude. And I only have a, I have a minus one score against him out of two blitz games. That's brutal. 
I just hopefully I can beat him. I have a draw and a loss in, in Blitz so far. <laughs> I don't know, man. He's a, he's 2,000, which isn't bad, but it's 500 points lower than me, so... He's not supposed to be, like, crushing me every time. All right. Knight g5 on h7. h6, hg. hg gets really crazy. That's bad for black. This might actually be good for me. But I, I'm scared a little bit. He's played so aggressively. I'm expecting this to not work somehow. 2,000. That's his rating floor. He was, he was assigned a rating floor from Lee Chess. <laughs> he was sandbagging in too many tournaments. Knight f2 check, rook takes f2. Obviously that's bad for black. He might be in real trouble here, but I didn't have that much confidence because he was sort of dictating the course of play all the way, um, in addition to being ahead on the clock. So I have fe followed by rook takes f6, which is just too good to be true. We might have um, f5. It looks too slow, though. f5. fe knight e5, rook f6, queen f6, queen takes h7 check. So he finds this calm defense here. Very calm defense. Now pawn takes g6, pawn takes e3, rook takes f6, rook e1 check, queen e1, it's still kind of murky. I guess I could just go back with bishop e2, then I'm losing material. Wow. Found another terrific move. So here... I just have to back off now. It's like he's winning now. Unless my sacrifice works. What? Okay, that's a move I never would even have considered. Wow. An insane move. With no time left. Wow, what a move. Amazing. Never even would have considered G takes F. That's a, that's a great move. Brilliant. Now he's got the increment only. But I don't have a good feeling about this. I'm not sure. I'm going to survive here. Maybe I can do this. Intermezzo tactic. The slight threat. You can win a piece. Oh, we actually beat him. Man, I'd love to see the analysis engine on this game. I thought I was, like, worse. What does it say after bishop e2? Right, g takes f is, like, unexpected. But the best move for black. Like, the only good move for black. And it's, like, unclear. I just completely missed it. g4 was my best practical try. And it's like unclear for white at best. Wow. All right, man. That was a crazy game. Another crazy game. Okay, AJ Prof is up next. I feel very, very lucky to win that one. Um, but anyway, it's good to get some challenging games. I don't want to just wipe people out. I mean, this is fun. We've had basically like five wins and two or three draws. I, don't, I didn't count exactly. 
Um, okay, so let's try to keep getting some sort of slightly open games. I, I, that was better, you know, it wasn't this bogged down, closed position. I'm good at staying calm under pressure because I'm usually slightly worse, <laughs> it seems like. AJ Prof. Professor AJ. He has a draw against me. Was it Simul? No. Oh, no. AJ Prof's the guy I closed the screen. The screen. <laughs> this, this stream with the five queen. He wouldn't, he wouldn't uh, resign like down a lot of pieces. So I made five queens and stalemated him. All right, I don't know where he is. He's not here. We'll take the next challenge from Baleful. Guys, we try to stay calm. In the increment, you have to get used to it. It's not sudden death. Believe me, I wouldn't be that calm if it was like 5-0. So it's a different game. You have to very much adapt from... You have to treat these as different animals. You know, 5 plus 0 versus 5 plus 3 or any kind of increment. They're completely different things. Remaining calm with the increment, time control, it's... um. It's a huge of huge importance. I've had over the board tournaments though where I panicked with like thirty second increments. I find it much stranger to to play um on the digital clock. You know, you have to reach lean your head over and look at the clock and it's it's a lot weirder playing with that situation. Okay, Baleful, I don't know this too much. I don't know this this I try to play the advanced variation because I've been working um with one or two of my students um, on, on Advanced Karakon, but I really don't know the lines very well. So we're just making it up. I also have a good friend of mine who plays this with white. Um, kind of a modern idea to play Knight D2, Knight B3. Wow, f6. Okay, so maybe Baleful knows some kind of theory because this move, I'm um, I'm out of my, out of my preparation now after f6. I always was, I was very skeptical when I first saw White playing these systems with knight d2, knight b3. The idea is to sort of play against Black c5. So it makes sense that Black would kind of squeak out the other way. You know, the other the other breaks would take on like a better or more, you know, powerful, powerful role in Black's defense. Um, I mean, I always like the idea of F6 in the advanced Karo Khan, but obviously it depends on the position. So how do I maintain my center here? I don't know. I mean, F4... If f4, f takes e, f takes e, queen h4, check, g3, queen e4, check, and I lose a rook. So we can't just play that. I mean, f4, we'd have to take back with a d pawn on e5. That doesn't seem right. So I guess we have to play knight f3 here. There just isn't, there just isn't another option. f4 is just too, it's too extended. That's my, my gut reaction anyway. So it's going to be, you know, I'm talking about playing open games and I play the advanced variation against the Karakhan. I just can't stop myself from playing like these complex closed positions. But honestly, that's why a lot of top grandmasters play the advanced variation against the Karakhan. It keeps pieces on the board. If you want to play for a win, I mean, this is, this is logical. I'm, as I said, I'm like out of my book entirely here. We'll have to take back with a pawn or something. It looks like we're going to have to literally take back with a pawn on e5. I am not crazy about that. Bishop d3 I thought about. And what's the big deal? Bishop d3. Okay, let's just make a move. I don't know what to do. This is probably a huge mistake for white. Probably I, I have to play like bishop e2 instead. This is hope chess. Wow, interesting move. Bishop to b4 check. I don't mind. 
I mean, trading pieces is probably good for him, but trading that particular piece, I can live with that. Anyway, I wanted to take back with the pawn on d3 to keep my central pawns. But I think he's equalized. At least, I don't know if you could call it equalized, but I think that black has sufficient chances here. The e5 pawn's a little overextended. I don't have any grave threats. Now he keeps his bad, or rather good, excuse me, his good bishop. Why well, does a space advantage? You know, we're just looking at a straight up space advantage here. So I, I don't know, that's controversial, Baleful. Pulling that back there, are you sure that was a good move? This was played rather impulsively. I mean, I know it's your good bishop, but now you have no place to put your knight. You know, where are you going to put your knight? I thought you were doing fine there. Just trade the bishop and, and you're close to equal. Trade the bishop, maybe take on e5 and play knight e7. You just, just equalized. But bishop e7 probably leaves black worse again. You simply have no space here. No place to put your king knight. Guys, this is this is fun today. But so many long games. Alright, he's clearly, as you can imagine, gearing up to castle queenside, but the e6 pawn is just not protected. What is going on here? So he's going to sack this pawn. Okay, so takes on f6, knight on g takes f6, queen takes e6, and then castles queenside when the, the bishop is poisoned. Um, I mean, strange as it might seem, it's not... Yeah, that's not my answer. We have other moves, though. Oleg Romanition. Special moves. <laughs> the Russians will be special players. So what if we don't take with the queen? What if we put our knight on e6 and try to step on him with a knight on e6? This is an open. This is open now. It's no longer a closed position. We got 51 viewers. I don't think we're going to make it to 75 today. Oh no. Yeah, this is different though. This is different. You can castle queenside and all that nonsense. But okay, this position is different. You you got no You know, in this case your pawn structure is not as wholesome any longer. You know, I think we're taking this and uh it's not the material that's black's problem in this position. Um I think the problem becomes not that he's like lost necessarily. Um but I think his problem becomes about like structure. I have a problem too though. I don't really know where to put my king. Bishop. Oh man, that's cool. Wow. Crazy. I need to get my king out of the center though. Really soon. Like really soon. Like next move. Or I could play king d1. I mean that's a creative approach, right? King d1 or king f1. Bishop b4 was interesting. There's no way you have time for this. h5. Oh, no. He didn't have bishop b4 there. I'm always looking for some sort of cheapo. That's my main idea in chess, is basically trying to find cheapos at the right moment. No, they never see bishop a5 coming. Where's Nefidov? <laughs> Nefidov is probably an expert. Bishop a5, you've probably gotten that on people in the Karo Khan. Is Nefidov here? He likes uh, He likes bishop a5 in the classical Karo Khan. Sent me a message on Lee Chess. Guarding lessons. Professional, strictly professional messages, please. Um, okay, queen f4. Well, yeah, we're just taking this. Thank you. Can I have another? Wow. That was lucky. We caught Baleful tactically. Don't go to sleep when you win, you know, material like this, though. Knight c5 is unfortunately not on the menu. What if I play g3? 
Drop a knight, that's good. Good idea. H2 is protected. I have some threats. Man, this move is too slow. You got Rick H7, huh? Why did I think he had Rook H7? That's like absurd. <laughs> I should have just played Knight C5 first, anyway. Um, okay. So. Best Annie E U W. I will answer you as soon as possible. Okay. This dude is not giving up here. You're making me angry. Like the Incredible Hulk. You want to play for time? All right, we'll play for time. Now I have to grovel this endgame. Ugh. How did he, I let him survive to, to a lost endgame? This is going to be kind of awkward now. Man, that's pissing me off. Ugh. He found that instantaneously. Baleful with two minutes left. Saw the exchange grab there with no time on the clock. And now he equalized. Damn, dude. He's like hypercharging it. He's got a minute and 46 seconds and equalized now. And still black is a tiny bit worse because of the isolated pawns and my outside pawn. <laughs> he might just be lost anyway. That's really sick. For him, I mean, yeah. It looks lost anyway. Welcome to endgame land. The H pun is going to be a real problem. My H pun has got to run fast. Like Forrest Gump. I can't believe how sneaky he was. Just when I thought, oh, I've got rook c3, try to get... <laughs> I walked into bishop a5. That's like how I lost to M Lambit Ol. Mbit Ol. R.I.P. I'm in check. Yeah, it would be good to know I was in check. Trapping my king. Mbit Ol. Look at this position. Crazy. Oh, G4 is brilliant. Wow, I had that. The middle got me with bishop a5. <laughs> Skewered a rook to, to my my king or something. Embarrassing loss in like 15 moves. 18 moves or something. Yeah. He was the weirdest player I ever played. He scared me. He was like creepy and freaked me out. Staring at me really weird. Like a month later, he like killed himself. He or maybe he was pushed. Nobody knows for sure. I mean, maybe somebody does, but totally freaked me out. The weirdest, weirdest look he was looking at me. Like, he had this aura about him. I can't really explain it any other way. Baleful. It seems like he's. Like his life depended on the game or something. He's never tried this hard before, it seems like. He's really, really motivated to beat me, it looks like. I mean, this has to be winning, right? You get to the key square. <laughs> How fast am I? Faster than you. We have epic games today.
Mbit Ol. No. No, he he jumped out of a building. But you never know. Alright. SXPG is up next. Lost again. You tried really hard there, Anonymous. I could feel I could feel the I could feel the uh the energy. Just like Lambert Ol. The aura. SXPG, um, the aura of power that makes the other guy drop a piece in 15 moves. E4, um, let's try something fun. We got half an hour left, 35 minutes, so I have time for two or three more games. Basically, three more games, let's say. Play the Sicilian. We haven't played a Sicilian today. That was a nice comeback, though, almost comeback. Ubadis isn't here today, is he? All right, so against d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4. I mean, this is standard, right? Yeah, they're not supposed to play d4, really. You tried this opening for the first time now, basically, and I didn't nuke you early. Well, I don't take my... I mean, I'm not an authority on that. I don't take myself too seriously. Why, is, why does this position seem something strange about this position? Oh, okay. Now this is correct. I'm just experimenting with 92, so don't judge your results in that in that Karakhan variation. We're both on the same level then, Anonymous. Because I really literally have no practical experience on that line, in that line with white. We're in the advanced variation of the Karakhan at all, actually. Um, but anyways, it seemed like you had a pretty good grip on what you were doing initially, then later, um, some mistakes. All right, so knight c3, knight b3, excuse me, knight b3, so bishop b4, or not to go bishop b4, the proverbial question. This is a popular variation for white, but not supposed to be good. Someone on sound, you can transpose to a mora. After c takes d4, oh, c3. So that's the best, that's a good line against a6. I see. Well, somebody else did that against me. This is another opening that I've been experimenting with, not really knowing the theory super well. Um, right. But I try to steal my, my students' openings, basically, <laughs> because I don't have my own when we spend time analyzing with the students, um, they enable me to, to come up with new stuff. So d5, e d5, queen d5, freeing the position, basically. I mean, can I just take on e4 here, though? Is this just a blunder by white? How does this work? I mean, I just take this, right? Is there some sort of trap? Maybe there's this crazy trap. So knight takes e4, queen g4, d5, Queen takes g7, and then queen f6. And that seems okay for black. That's probably like a line, actually. I think I saw this. Knight takes e4, queen to here. <laughs> actually was played somewhere. Um, it feels like it's a trap, though. But who's a trap for? Check to the king. What's up, guys? Thanks for joining me for our Fast Friday, just 5 plus 3, Casual Blitz. I'm only going to play two more games after this. My last three for the day, basically, Unicorn. And I guess, man, Bob Lee was brutal. Oh, he's 2,600 in, in rat. let's see. 2,600 Rapid. Um, Ludwig A, C, Bamboo Stick, or Take Back. I'm taking the subscribers, you know, in my normal streams, Mondays and Wednesdays, I always take the subscribers by preference, but... I don't do that on Fridays to try to give everybody a chance to play. So I play queen d3 instead. This just looks too slow. White just lost a central pawn. Admittedly, white has more pieces developed, but that really shouldn't be enough to compensate for losing a central pawn. So I guess, I mean, I don't know. D4, 
d5 would make the most sense here. But be careful. You can try to put more pressure on the center with rook d1. Then I have bishop e6. So everything's more or less okay. Castling queenside looks kind of risky for white. I mean, given the open status of knight takes c3, bc, something like that. Bishop a3 check. <clears throat> Alright, he's basically all in. I mean, I can understand that, though. That makes some sense. White is just all in. We just have to be accurate here. This is with tempo. And then we have to secure our central pawn. With bishop b6, I suppose, and we're we're better. I wouldn't say winning, but better. Sparkle or six inaccuracies, five mistakes, three blunders. Well, that's normal for an advanced Karo Khan, I guess. Those positions are crazy complicated. We made tons of mistakes, Anonymous. I, I'm not surprised. You know, the more complicated the opening, the higher the center pawn loss. If you play the King's Gambit, I mean, of course you're going to have, like, a 50 center pawn loss. Um, that was a really double-edged and, and complicated position. I mean, I hope I wouldn't have a 50 center pawn loss if it was, if it was like a rapid game or something longer, but, but I'm not surprised at all. Um, that basically measures like, you know, how inaccurate your moves were during the game in terms of like, you know, tenths of pawns. F4, it's Nimzovich, SXPG, um, another player who plays really credibly, but has a bad score against me. I mean, I guess it's not a, not a terrible score, you know, if you think about the rating difference between us, four to, you know, 27 to four, but it's not a great score, but I feel like he's better than his score really, you know, shows. All right, we're trying to keep the pawns abreast one another. Now go and beat beat me. Keith Arkell games. <laughs> Percy Hepworth. Yeah, I, I friended Keith Arkell recently on Facebook. He has this challenge where he's trying to gain... Um, He's trying to gain like a hundred and something rating points and he's doing pretty well. That's impressive. Um, but Arkel plays a very, very solid, ultra safe, systematic style. You know, he's a very special kind of player. He's going to have a low center pawn loss, but he, he doesn't take a lot of risks. He beat me one time in this like boring, um, the one time we played, it was, it was the ultra boring, uh, exchange of, of bishops like in the queen's indian main line with he was white and did like knight h4 bishop takes g2 you know knight takes g2 or something like that and, and just traded pieces into a into a the, the theoretical ending that's supposed to be like equal but he's very very good at that so yeah keith arkel games would be end games with <laughs> very low sent upon loss he plays some interesting interesting things too though not always um, and games and and like and uh, technical positions. Wow, C four. Oh my god! Look at this move. Satanic. C four. I have to play D four. The knight takes D four. What does he do? I'm I'm just I'm going. I have to go. This is crazy. I don't think there's any other move for me. Literally. Wow, does this work? He's sacking a piece now? I'm terrified. Terra farming. Well, I'm under this like mistaken impression that I'm a piece for some reason. Seriously disturbing. I'm planning on castling queenside now, <laughs> apparently. For some reason, I guess I was thinking I was, like, up something. 
but given the time situation, I don't really have a better option here. Everybody does play well, um, and that's usual. Also, my simuls, a lot of really strong, strong opposition. I mean, I think that my stream attracts stronger amateurs, and it's normal. Now here, SXPG, like, just decided to sack a piece, which is terrifying. This was certainly not on my horizon. I mean, not many people are going to play that move. So knight c6, and uh, and then queen takes a3, knight takes d4. All right, I don't have a better suggestion. If anyone has a better suggestion, then speak now quickly, because I don't have anything else in mind here. I hope this works. That's all I know. I don't know that it works, though. It's a very scary position. Queen takes f3 was crushing? Well, I'm not so sure about that. I mean, crushing, why? Um, I don't think it was crushing. Knight takes d4, e takes d4. Queen takes a3, knight c6. I mean, it's equal material, and I'm threatening queen b6 check. I don't think that it's crushing. Um... You've got to keep in mind that I'm threatening queen b6 check, and, and I've got the ability to castle queenside, you know, like this. Look, mom. So I don't think it was that clear in reality. This could be a problem for white. I guess we're winning. White runs out of things to do now. He defended. Wow. I didn't think you had a defense there. Nice. Okay, I mean, I have queen a1 winning a rook. That wouldn't be bad. I was trying to play for mate here. Um, but I'm probably being too fancy. Rook takes. I'll just take the rook. Literally, rook takes. All right, so let's see what's happening. Um, there was a request to look at the position after bishop a3. Uh, let's see, d4. Knight takes d4. Bishop takes d4, unnecessary sacrifice. I agree, queen takes a3 is better. But I wasn't on the impression that, I wasn't under the impression that black is like lost or something. I didn't think it was clear. So let's see what the oracle says quickly, and then move on to the next game. I mean, I'm not surprised if white's better, but I didn't think it was crushing. Let us see. Queen takes a3. I expect to be the best move. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty much what I figured. Like, knight c6 and white is better, but it's not, like, crushing. Slight advantage to white. It's kind of a complicated position. Yeah, this, this is not that bad for black, probably. 0.5 advantage for white. We'll need to let the engine run a little bit longer. It's coming up with like plus one. But anyway, it's it's not that clear. 0.8 after 20 move depth. Let's see. Um, Unicorn is up next. 5 plus 3. Does this guy have enough games? 2089? No. Alright, so we're not going to play Unicorn. Bob Lee and AC. That rhymes. Bob Lee and AC would be a, would be our last games for the day. Percy Hepworth, thank you for the uh, thank you for the donation, 105. And also to our other other players who donated, um, the viewers who donated to support the stream. Thanks guys for helping the stream stay alive. Uh, moving into the next year, I just want to remind everyone that I do upload all the streams to YouTube, video chess training on YouTube, and I'd like to. Uh, I'd really like to remind everyone that we have a simul on Sunday at uh, 4.30 Eastern Time. Okay, Bob Lee Swagger. This guy was crazy strong. He's 2,600 in rapid chess, apparently. But, I mean, I'll play him because he seemed, he seemed like a human yesterday. 
Okay, I'm trying like a lot of modern defense stuff for fun. We should add more commands to the Twitch. <laughs> My mom wasn't like dying in the hospital right now. Um, not really literally dying, thank God, but I've been dealing with a lot of things outside the stream, so I don't have time to uh, to do all the stuff I'd like to do to make the stream better and and uh, you know adding commands and stuff. I would I would like to do implement definitely. Um, I also want to have uh, I want to have it more um, more open like about my schedule. I have to update the Sparkle Horse team on Lee Chess. All right, so knight f3, we've got knight f3, h3, the same exact game I had with a different player today, except white played h3 here. I've never literally played this for black, this modern defense move order. So it's kind of bad to experiment against a strong player like this guy. I mean, I really don't know um, how you're supposed to play this setup. We had a difficult game earlier. This player seems insanely strong. I'm a little more comfortable with the King's Indian type of formation. If I play Queen E7, um, what am I going to do? That's kind of weird. Queen E7. Okay, Bishop E2. Very similar to first first game. Well, one of the first games I played today. Except in that in that case, we played like c3 and queen b3, and you guys remember knight a3. He was kind of waiting, and he didn't castle. But this is a different case now. It's just simply playing kind of straightforward castles. That's normal. I mean, this is a much more standard policy Bob Lee is doing here. The standard London system, very standard. Like a4, we basically transposed. Now this move again. I mean. The second player who played knight a3 rather than knight on bd2. So he's he's an authority on this. But I don't know this player again. It's suspicious. That rating is extremely suspicious. The 26-24 in rapid chess. I would never play like a rated game with this guy. Or anybody with, with a 500 rating point difference between their ratings. Since it's casual, I'm not going to worry about it. But... <laughs> I definitely wouldn't accept a challenge um, if it were rated. Not a good idea. Um, all right, so rookie one. <sighs> yeah, this is pretty standard st sort of stuff. Doing something similar to what I did in the other game. But I guess I play this type of position with white fairly often. In other game I played, um, let's see, knight c4. In the other game I did, let's see, now he's got pressure on e5. He's used no time for the whole game. Um, knight e8 is possible. Rook e8 is possible. I need three defenders of e5 here. Knight e8 is great. The other game I played king h8 and knight g8 in a similar structure. But Bob, um, I don't know Bob. Bob's pretty weird. Mystery player. New account. Very strange rapid rating. What can I say? I did beat him yesterday, barely, in a very, very tense blitz game. All right, guys, just don't forget, there's a simul on Sunday. That's the next stream. It'll be 4.30 Eastern time for 20 to 25 players. It usually lasts about two and a half hours, so please don't plan to play in my simul on Sunday unless you have two and a half, possibly more, um, possibly more time to play. Speaking of Mark Esserman... Bob, years ago, I had the mirror image. Well, I don't think Bob's here anymore. He was here earlier. I had a mirror image game. Where I was white against... The white side of the radii against the, the London system. Um, Queen b3. This is all perfect setup for white. The instantaneous Queen a3. Like, who is this guy? I mean, he's playing all these moves in like one minute. He's a London system expert. All right, I guess I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to play e4 eventually because that's too much of a threat now. He's gonna open it up and just hurt my queen on e7. JC knows every opening. 
Well, people are opening files, you know what I mean? Like, that's why they love chess. Certain players are, of course, if they the openings are the favorite part of the game. I mean, they're going to like openings best, and they're going to know. Um, I think that a lot of players put too much emphasis on openings, though. But that's JCS's specialty. I like openings, but I don't think I'm biased, you know, more toward openings than other stages of the game. I think I'm kind of balanced in, in my appreciation for the different, or my appeal to the different types and stages of the game. I think I'm weaker than a lot of title players in terms of opening knowledge. But at the same time, it can be an advantage, you know. You don't become reliant, overly reliant on, on your opening theory, I think. And just learning to be resourceful uh, are very, very important skills. Knight f1 is kind of a weird move here. The eventuality would be to try to play for like g5, f4. Eventuality. Which knight should I use? I guess this one. Now he can do a combination, I guess, sacrifice two pieces for rook and two pawns. I would think it would be kind of unclear. Didn't that happen in another game? That happened in our other game. Wait, it was the same basic thing, right? He sacked a piece, two pieces for rook and pawn. It's the exact same thing that happened in the exact other game we had with the same guy. I mean, that's just bizarre. With colors reversed. So maybe this is the only opening he plays. Like, he only plays the London system <laughs> with both colors. And that's pretty weird. <laughs> I only play the London system with both colors. The only opening that I do. All right. This is just messy and unclear. As I said, like the exact same thing from our game the other day, opposite colors. Now what? I guess queen g7. We try to attack him on the king side. Would that be the most logical thing to do? I think. Guys, we have time for hopefully one more game after this, if this doesn't go ages. The last time I played with this guy, it was like three hours long, five minute game. I think we're gonna see the same thing here. Isn't this maybe the same guy, different account? What do you mean? It's the same guy I played the other day, just it was colors reversed. Um, okay, c4 now, what are we doing? We're playing for mate. Mate is great. And yeah, I mean, it makes sense to play for mate. Mate is normally the right idea. Okay, so now, um, blockade is the name of the, the, name of the game. Blockade at the stockade. See, the problem with Bob's sacrifice or exchange is that in the middle game, especially in closed positions, in the opening, I mean, usually the minor pieces are stronger than the rooks. So we're still in that stage of the game where my minor pieces are worth more than the rooks. And that's why he's got a problem here. Um... My attack looks very strong. The rooks come into the G file. The only piece that's not playing, the piece that's not playing is the bishop on C8. We want his rooks to be out of the out of the equation, basically. Two 
two bishops, the bishop on c8, I'm sorry, b7, very, very much not in the game here. But I think our other assets are pretty powerful. We should have good chances. Definitely not trading queens. If I trade queens here, it would be messy, a messy endgame. I'm not necessarily winning there. I mean, I may not, maybe I'm not winning at all. I mean, it looks good on the surface, but I'm not sure I have enough here. Let's play queen h3. This gives us various threats. Now knight e5. And I even have bishop c8 maybe. Another rook, rook g6. He's got a defense here. At least temporarily. Yeah, Soltis's book on pawn structure is decent. This is winning, right? The two pieces are too strong for the rook here in this scenario. Just queen h3. It's not winning. Oh, wow, that's sweet. All right. Okay, last game for today is Ludwig. Sorry, I can't play everybody. Last game, let's go, guys. So Sunday, we're going to be back, 4.30 Eastern Time. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks to JCS for being our moderator today. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching and being faithful participants. Um, the Panda crew. Hello. So we'll see you guys later. All right, so what do we got? Ludwig AC. Another closed position. Closed. Closed. Yeah, this is funny. Ludwig, I like to play like knight c6, bishop b5. I played that against Tony Miles in an exhibition exhibition game. And uh, Tony just played e5, I think. You can play it right away. That's kind of fun. Um... All right, so what should we do here? A6. Bishop A4. Not compromising very well. I won't compromise either. I will not play, um, you know, I'm not going to transpose to like a Spanish or something with E5. I feel like keeping it in something different. G no, C3 is a good move here to... Just make this bishop sort of nothing. Good move. So if I can't play, I mean, if I don't want to play e5, I mean, e5 here transposes to a straight up 
the Spanish. Um, the only other option is knight f6, I guess. And then he's got e5. I'm not crazy about that. I could play b5, though. Drastically weakening my queen side. All right, let's try it. It's it's weird, and it's fun, and it's my last game of the day, so we're just going to go for it. It's like the Spanish, but I didn't play e5. It's an accelerated Spanish. Accelerated Zaitsev system. Could be a Sicilian. It's a really strange Sicilian now, if I do that. Just a weird opening, period. All right. So e5 would, would have been, again, very classical type of Roy Lopez position. I can still play it, maybe, next move. For example, knight d2, e5, d, e, d, e, knight takes e5, rook e8, maybe... And I'm probably well yeah I might be able to do it bishop d2 is a weird move this is not a good move probably it's just just useful me playing knight c4 hitting b2 driving him back and having a good fallback square here you have like four of the books mentioned I haven't broken them open yet <laughs> You have too many books, my friend. All right. Broken them open at all, literally, not one page, or you just haven't really, really started to study them. Which which is it? Are you exaggerating? Are you you literally haven't like read a page from those books? The Soltis Pawn Structure book is probably one of the older ones. Um, Hans Kamak is the best, in my opinion. Pawn structure or pawn power in chess. I know there are more modern ones. Yeah. Thank you, Merle, for being here with us and uh, and all your support. You know for the stream. Ludwig is falling apart. He's dropping the e4 pawn now. That seems. There is a question: of which way I should take it? Always take with a knight. Knights before bishops, they say. He'll damage my pawn structure slightly, you know, with bishop takes c4, but that's not a big deal here. This thing is, now it's, it's, it's a monster. Frankenstein bishop. The bishop from hell. It's going to do damage later on. Um, I think an essential book that's worth its weight in gold is Chess Strategy for Club Players by Herman Gruten. This is JCS recommending. A resident opening theory slash moderator. Opening theory groupie and expert and moderator. You're an opening theory groupie. Knight takes e4. The Sultis, yeah, was like reissued or something. I think he wrote that a long time ago. Now what? White looks very, very passive here. Knight g5. We're getting fancy at this point. I feel like we're getting too fancy for our own good. I'm playing combinations that don't work. That's always a good idea. <laughs> Let's play a combination that doesn't work. Good job.
This is such a bizarre position. Thought I was winning, but I'm not. I could be in a lot of trouble now. I up the screwed this. I got fancy and I thought I was winning. I thought I had a night check, but I didn't have a follow up. Oh man. All right. I guess we'll just play this and hope for the best. Always keep an open mind. What else you can do, really? This is wild. Sacrifice everything. When in doubt, just sacrifice everything. So if rook takes a8, queen takes h3, doesn't work. I got a little bit reckless in last game. I think we see Ludwig tactically is pretty good. We've got to count on him to make some sort of strategic mistakes. But be careful with him tactically. The quality chess is quality. <laughs> That's interesting. Quite a theory you've got there. Um, does anyone know what's actually going on here? Because I'm pretty much not sure. So queen takes h3, queen f1. Queen takes h3, bishop f1. Queen takes h3. Wait, he had a defense. Right. I thought he had a defense to queen takes h3. There's also queen e4, which is my original plan. Why am I not playing queen e4? Oh, that's why. Okay. I don't know. It's unclear. Only down a rook and a knight, nothing much. Maybe we can at least confuse him. I'm down two rooks and a knight momentarily. It's no problem. King f1 was not the right idea. Okay, so the only move for white there, I mean, the only move is f3. And it probably wins for white somehow, although it's kind of hokey and confusing. He's losing his queen here, which is probably not the best white could hope for. So objectively, f3 looks like I'm down too many pieces. Let's see. Turn on the engine. I'm going to go, guys. It was fun while it lasted. Yeah, f3 wins. You also have rook g8 check and f3. <laughs> Not surprisingly, f3 wins. Okay, so... Oh my god, I was winning with queen takes h3? No. no. I'm lost here. I mean, I was just lost. I got too generous with my pieces. There's nothing. I mean, I just basically blundered here when I took on d4. For some reason, I thought I had like knight h3 check and then realized that that doesn't work. <laughs> and then I just went berserk. I took here. I thought, oh, it's back rank mate. But there's no back rank mate because he has bishop f1. So I'm just busted. Um, anyway, it was a little swindle. We will see you guys again on Sunday. Thanks, everybody, for watching and playing. It was my pleasure to host the stream. 
We will see you on Sunday. Thanks again in advance. And thanks again to JCS and everybody who supported the stream. Donations, Streamlabs donations. And, um, and Merle for the gift subs for everyone who subscribed to the stream. Thanks again. I will see you guys on Sunday for the simul. And have a great weekend. Bye-bye.